Ramble. Hello and welcome to Guilty Pleasures, the podcast that is quickly becoming an Anna Kendrick stand show. Uh, this week we're talking about 2012's Aka hit, Pitch Perfect. If you haven't seen it, we got you covered. Spoilers ahead, because uh, I'm not going to lie, saying Aka hit did not feel good. Uh, I'm Zach Kornfeld. Joining me as always is Kelsey Dara and Garrick Bernard. Yo. I hey. just want to say that I'm not speaking directly to Garrick. Um, That's fair because I know how he feels about this movie and I've okay. never wanted to, I've never felt so betrayed. Um, <laughs> I scheduled an emergency therapy session this morning. I <laughs> Thankfully, you know, I've got some support here. I won't reveal, spoiler, who our special guest is, but I just want to lay that out very quickly that there's never been so much tension in the group chat and I'm not thrilled to be here. I didn't know I was on the silent treatment, um, <laughs> uh, but... Apparently I am, and I'm mm -hmm. not sorry for it at all. Mm. Yeah, I have a feeling that we're about to throw down. Uh, battle lines will be drawn. You won't spoil our guest, but I will. Uh, <laughs> joining us this week to sing the praises of this movie as one of their faves. You know her from HBO Max's Craftopia, her very funny podcast, Wild Till Nine, and of course, her YouTube channel, Lord DIY. Ms. Lauren Riyamaki. Hello, Lauren. Yay. Yay. I feel like I, like I was waiting for like the air horns, like the bow, 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 bow. Oh, we can make air horns. Yeah, we don't have this, that budget yet. this is an acapella movie. We could sing, <laughs> don't they? Like, isn't that a thing they do? That's basically the whole movie. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Garrick, you're going to witness today, uh, in addition to the battle between you and Kelsey, uh, the, the mm -hmm. battle between Kelsey and I, uh, Lauren is my best friend, one of my best no, friends, not. and I she's made the mistake of introducing Kelsey friend. and Lauren. Uh, now clearly. they're becoming best friends, and I don't like Stolen. it. Stolen. I don't right. I like it. St I like Lauren, it. like, if you I had like to choose, I'm, I'm like, with it. <laughs> boat is sinking, who are you taking with you? I'm drink water right now. Oh my god, shit. This is this is really it's, hard because Zach so and I obvious. Zach and I have more have more years. He's got seniority. Uh -huh. But Kelsey, but. you and I, we're constantly, we're not ever not talking. <laughs> if you don't text me, I'm worried. I'm like right, right. an hour has gone by and I don't know how she is. And I I'm haven't gotten a cops. dog TikTok. So I win, Zach. See what I have to deal yeah. with here. <laughs> uh, let's get into it. Pitch Perfect follows Becca, a moody college freshman who loves making mashups. And we know she's moody because she wears thick eyeliner and Legend of Zelda <laughs> boots. She is dragged into Barton University's thriving competitive acapella community, where she tr there tries to resist the charms of her inevitable love story with Skylar Astin. While her ragtag group of acapellist underdogs, the Bellas, featuring fan faves like Fat Amy, train for the IACC finals to prove that girls can sing too. They sing acapella covers, they make vomit snow angels, and along the way, they learn the power of friendship. Pitch <laughs> perfect. Uh, Lauren, I guess we'll start with you. What does this movie mean to you? Why do you love Pitch Perfect? I loved this movie the moment that came out, but I am now dating someone who literally lived this life. He was in the Acoustacats. Oh my God. <laughs> no. I no. fully <laughs> forgot. I forgot. He was straight up in acapella competitions. One that was actually on NBC oh. called The Sing Off. Like, so he lived, he lived pitch perfect. Wow. Yeah, so he lived that life. So anyway, I just feel like it's all come full circle for me and my life. Also, Jeremy has the aesthetic of the Skylar. What's his name? Skylar Austin. Skylar like, Austin. Yeah, 100%. like super quaffed mane, like very porcelain <laughs> skin, chisel jaw. Like you're yep. dating that guy. Yeah, I'm dating Skylar Austin. Yeah, 100%. And now he doesn't sing for for us ever. I've never been able to get Jeremy to sing. Does he sing for you? Is that part of the relationship? <sighs> He won't. Not really. Like, you know, the, the tune of like, do you want to build a snowman? He'll be like, do you want to see my ball sack? You know what I mean? Like, so like he'll <laughs> remix. Silly, silly So it sounds great. It sounds great. It really does. But it's just like the parody of an actual song. So rude. He has a voice of an angel and he hides it. I know. Much like Becca does in this movie. Yeah, listen, if I could sing, I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing, but it would have I'd it probably be, be in this. jail once or twice. <laughs> it wouldn't. Be, no, it would be this, but I'd probably be singing the entire time. 
I'd be singing all of my opinions about the movie. Rick, give us give us a couple notes. Just give us a little. I just want to hear a little bit of that beautiful voice. Because you have such a radio Why? voice and face, if you fucking ask me. Ow, 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 ow. But seriously, just give us like a couple. A radio minutes. face means that you can't see me. That means that you're an ugly yeah, person. Yeah, that's what I'm dissing that's, that's you. Yeah, that, that, felt, that felt backwards. That's up. That's Wait, up. Are, yeah, no, that's I was dissing you because I'm mad at you, remember? Oh, I can't sing. Come on. I cannot sing. Please don't do this. Do I it, you pussy. Can, I couldn't do even. It, I have. Pussy. I've never even done karaoke <laughs> because of how scared I am of, of singing. Really? Oh. You won't do karaoke? Yeah. I will not. Oh, so this karaoke. is a fear based so, hate. This leads. Yes. Oh. No. No. It's he's not a fear based hate. I'm so sorry. Because he's not. <laughs> of course I'm in. Okay. This let's, makes let's so much sense start now. off. Let's start the start the line mm-hmm. right here. I am insecure, <laughs> but it is this is not why I hate this movie. Okay, sure, Rick. <laughs> Prove me wrong. You can be insecure and hate a movie for totally separate reasons. <laughs> no, because I love D'Angelo with all of my heart and soul because he's a, a beautiful song stress. Mm. Well, this show is going to be separated into our pleasures and our guilt. What are the things that we loved about the movie? And what are the things that made us go, huh, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's dive <laughs> into some pleasures. Who wants to kick us off? Me, me, I'll pick go. me. I'll go. Oh, Lauren, you pick go. Me, okay. Pick me, no, pick Lauren, me. Lauren, you're okay, the okay, guest. Okay. You're the guest. You're the guest. Okay, okay. My favorite part of the movie is the riff off, hands down. The riff off when they're in the pool, they spin the thing. You have to sing the song, "Ladies of the '80s." You have to pick up where the other uh, group left off, and it's all got a mesh. Again, mm-hmm. I can't sing, and so there's something like immensely entertaining and enjoyable about that part yeah so it's this scene where they're in an abandoned swimming pool yeah. it's, it's emptied out yes. for some reason and they spin a big old wheel and they have to mm-hmm. spontaneously sing in that style but then what is it whatever lyric someone leaves exactly. off on they immediately right. jump in and perfectly yeah. in unison mm-hmm. <laughs> sing a fully yeah. orchestrated acapella yes song. i would like to present right. to yes. rick garrick what other movie has boys to men black street and ace of bass in the same monologue name one it's ingenious <laughs> it's it's something I don't know about a genius. <laughs> I don't know about a genius. Um, I also don't know if five white women could uh, just say no diggity or sing sing along to that with no. It was fuck a ups. little painful. I was just like all right, a little embarrassing. <laughs> okay, but I did like I, that part. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Look, part I too. Until she started rapping, I was like, oh my god. It you was know, great, Anna it was Kendrick great. is <laughs> so embarrassed by that now, right? Like she probably had oh, the time. I disagree. I think Anna Kendrick is stoked when she was cast, and she's like, "By the way, guys, I can rap," and I'm like, "Pretty good at yeah, it." Yeah. Then, then they wrote that part for her. Yeah. Then really? and then now she's probably like, "What the fuck was I doing?" This could be her, in general. She looks pretty embarrassed to be in the film. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> she looked pretty mad. She was like, oh my God. Okay, yeah. Where, where's my fucking spot, dog? It's right here looking down oh the God. whole time. Whatever. The check Please. must have been big enough because we got we got three. Mm. Three we got movies. three movies. Three and movies she only that. gets better. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Rotten my. Tomatoes begs to differ. Mm. Uh, no, actually, <laughs> I was just reading an article that number two did really well. Oh. You know, okay, so we're talking about the pleasure of the music. And we we normally will we'll go pleasure for a long time. But I, to me, the music is both a pleasure and a guilt. I, yes. It is hard for me. Look, I guess what I'm revealing here is I'm not an acapella guy. I, yeah. I just okay. it's not for me now we're getting I, into it i now just we're... in general i can't stand what i call the kids bopification of music yes where wait okay wait take... stop 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 it's not okay. kids bop it's like remember dj earworm or whatever who would make the remix at the end of the year with all the songs yes it's a mashup i get you it you guys it's are forgetting cool. that i'm literally in a long-term committed relationship with a mashup DJ, right? With DJ. He's he yeah. he yeah. specifically became famous slap. for mashups, and I yeah. am a musical theater whore and minor. Oh, so you you fucking dog. Love I was this flicking shit. my bean the entire. As soon as oh that Universal God. logo opens on the black screen, and you're okay. waiting to and hear the like, drums. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 and do, do. this is where I was just like, turn this shit off right <laughs> now. Hater, hater, I was, hater, I hater, was hater. so 
pissed. <laughs> I was so upset that they were they were remixing the fucking like I I don't even like it when they add like 808s oh at God. the back of like <gasps> uh, of the Marvel shit Ugh. when they did um Black Panther or whatever just so that right. you know we can have He's some context. Purist. I don't don't He's change it. Don't change it. It's weird. Okay, Rick, but can I ask you cuz this is my pleasure mm-hmm. it's like an overall pleasure yeah. and I, this is why i'm this yeah. is why i would like to confront you about it because as a comedy writer <laughs> okay i feel like you yeah. should understand the genre of self deprecation and from the moment this movie starts they are making fun of them fucking selves every piece of yeah genius oh. literature that comes out of elizabeth banks and whatever that other fucking home dad yeah. motherfucker john thank you, john is just pure ecstasy of reflection on of themselves and they're totally making fun of glee kids they're totally making fun of musical theater nerds and like i don't know if a lot of people know this but this was ben platt's introduction into mainstream home theaters our one and only dear evan hansen and Rick, I don't know if you were in the room the day that I played the Dear Evan Hansen musical theme songs at work and I was like on top of the table. Oh. I digress. <laughs> but the point is that I fucking love Ben Platt. And this was like the crossover of amazing singers on Broadway into our homes, which most people would never get to see without a movie like this. Also, I feel like as a basic bitch who knows nothing about theater, this is the crossover of like Ben Platt stuff, <sighs> which, you know, I'm, I'm like, yeah, Ben, okay, you sure. Like, what was... Oh my god! Oh my god! Do you feel the 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 lasers coming out of Kelsey's face right now? Like, oh my god! All of my <laughs> Botox just, just like you rejected, just, just, just undid. Just, but like, okay, I'm, as I'm, like just I'm a basic this. bitch who loves shitty TV and movies, okay. it's like a okay. nice intersection, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I I do th- I did see like the self awareness, but I think okay. So when you're dealing with something as hammy as <laughs> as acapella, mm. and I'm you have to. You got to go to the fucking moon. I wanted to I see like claymation in the background. It no. had to be on like that she level. I projectile not, not vomits in the first three minutes of the movie onto the crowd. Yeah. And that's, and that's great. <laughs> Garrick is not alone here. I'm on team Rick here. Like there are things I like about it, but let's just do a full on fucking throwdown right here. Anna Kendrick uh, is in it. Yes. There are She's, moments of camping. Come on. Yeah. Anna Kendrick's in it. We're obviously going to have a good time. We're yeah, we're, we're going to have fun. a good time. Every time so, I was doubting the movie, I was just like, yo, but just Anna, look at Anna Kendrick. Anna look Kendrick's. at how adorable she is. She's bopping she around. Is so, hot. so, okay, th- there is a campiness to this movie that I enjoyed and I laughed. I had some good laughs. Like, the, there is yeah. projectile vomit. You have a character making vomit snow angels mm-hmm. at one point. Yeah. Like, there is some crazy shit. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it, I think. It didn't go into full camp like it wanted to be it kind of almost wanted to be dodgeball where you had like the wacky themed teams with the sacapellas but it didn't Ugh, really the go there and i i wanted it, it didn't lean into it like the the closest we got was like oh we got the one black team and then they got disqualified <laughs> yeah and then one of them one of the black kids wasn't in college <laughs> like what the fuck are you out of your mind? They did. They <laughs> like, did. You're not give in college, a lot of, are like, you? The and black like, no. vocals to a lot of the black people. But one of the jokes that killed me is when they walk in on the sock puppet team, and one of the girls goes, oh, "Look at the black guy with the white puppet. That's saying something. Yeah, <laughs> that's making yeah. a statement. Okay. <laughs> They're so cheesy. Like, there's just so much quick writing that, like. I feel like every other line was a joke all the way up until, you know, the drama of when it gets like Mm. dramatic with whatever drama happens in singing competitions. I do get why Rebel Wilson got like shot into stardom off of this too. She was great. Oh, she was the star. She was so funny. Well, when I was looking into facts for this, I found uh, that Rebel Wilson basically just improvised the entire movie. They would just let her riff. (laughs) For 20 to 40 minutes. And to me, actually, that kind of shows because the comedy in this movie is oftentimes not situation based. It's just her saying something fucking crazy and occasionally racist, which we'll get into later. Uh, But I enjoyed her as a thing. And look, we talked about Anna Kendrick. Like, there's a moment where Anna Kendrick says, that's my dick. Yeah. Uh, A moment I didn't know I needed in a movie. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Big Anna great. stands over when her here. when her roommate came in and she was like, "The white woman is here," and that <laughs> made me laugh really. La- that made me laugh really hard. There was some like funny, memorable moments. I think that still live on. Yeah. Like the other pleasure I had was like, "This is the movie where we got the uh, excuse me" and a lot of the any aka uh, anything yeah. words. And the other beautiful right. thing that we got from this movie, which I will now present to you live, <clears throat> oh. is the cup oh, song. No. Oh, no. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> she knows it. Wow! Go off, bitch. <laughs> I gotta take it for the long way round. For the long way home. To a whiskey. To for the whiskey. Way. <laughs> and yes, yeah. I usually pay for people to see that, so you're fucking welcome. That's some like that's some exclusive only fans. <laughs> A quick detour from our stupid movie talk. We have our first sponsor on the show, and we could not be more thrilled that it is BetterHelp. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. Here's the deal. Therapy saved my life. I went to therapy as a child, and I stopped going for many, many years, and I missed it so much. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available to those who need. You can find licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, anger, stress, anxiety, LGBT matters, relationships, and so much more. Everyone here at Guilty Pleasures, we really love BetterHelp. We use BetterHelp. We are so appreciative to have BetterHelp in our lives. So many people are using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you get 10% off your your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash guilty pleasures. That was fantastic, Kelsey. Yeah, I know. So the Cup song uh, uh, was like an original hit from this movie. It, I think, yeah. charted on the Billboard list. It, it got to number six. I was waiting the whole movie for it to be a thing like she she auditions yeah. with it and i'm like cool that's confusing why is she singing this old like shanty right. song of like does her dad shanty grew song. up in a bar like what is this thing and it never comes back so what the fuck is this song why is this song a phenomenon it hasn't it, okay it, it, but how how impressive is it that it wasn't even a thing past the audition and every bitch yes. on, was it was this vine era yes. like everyone yeah. was learning the cup song mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I was as I was watching, I was like, there is no bounds in glee. I, I've never seen a glee club. I've never had it. I, I, I went to a, a white high school and I was watching this movie. I was like, what <laughs> white nonsense is this? Like the whole time, because I the, the closest I've ever gotten to it, right, was um seeing like the the thespian kids in ninth grade. Troop six five two nine in first like, honors it, program. It, Thank you very much. <laughs> first <laughs> There it is. There it First, is. excellent. There it you sound super cool <laughs> right now. Yeah, that was running around the quad yes. in like the goofiest stuff, and I'm just like, yo, I'm just trying to get to the class, bro. <laughs> don't you don't have to jingle these bells in front of me, man. And then I, I I started the movie, and I was like, okay, so now they're doing that, and then adding singing and beatboxing. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> No, absolutely, no. absolutely not. Absolutely, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do this right now. <laughs> but, Rick, the movie but, was and, not but, made for you. You know, and it's it was so not apparent. made for me in the slightest. This is ultimate white people shit right here. I wrote this in my notes, Garrick. You had said that Bridgerton was the whitest thing you'd ever watched. I'm curious if you like, amend that <laughs> statement. It's perfect. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is the modern day oh. version. Okay. <laughs> But it's not a bad movie as far as like hidden beats mm-hmm. and all that stuff. It's like, yeah, sure. But the subject matter is is one I, I just will never be able to yeah. get over. Is that honey? What's happening right yeah, now? Yeah, Kelsey just yeah, dumps honey me. straight into her a mouth. It's a I have a you sinus have infection. You, you'll get used to it. We, we, have, okay. we have a little sec- segment called uh, Kelsey's Honey Breaks. Uh, where she just <laughs> I was like, why is no one reacting to this? What's happening funny. right now? Like, they're so yeah, used to you'll, it. You'll get used to it, Lauren. <laughs> okay, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Got it. No heads up. No warning. Sorry, got it. Sorry, got it. Sorry. Got it. I've got some pleasures. One, I agree with it, with Garrick. It, like, it is a well-made movie. It is. Yeah. It, it hits the beats. It knows what it's doing. Mm-hmm. This is not uh, uh, so bad. It's good movie because it is. Uh, you know, it's doing its thing and it know it's doing it confidently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, this is a quick one, and then I've got a big one. Uh, we we had talked about our girl Anna Kendrick a lot in Twilight. How we believe that she should have been the lead of this movie. So I just want to present yeah. to you. 
Here, she is playing the moody lead. She's in a group called the Bellas. This is her Twilight Revenge story, okay? Oh, shit. She's this so mad saying, about fucking not getting Bella. I should have been Bella Swan, and I'm going to fucking prove it. Whoa. Yeah, oh, oh shit. I hate that. I hate that. I'm not done with that. <laughs> I haven't seen the Twilight it. episode yet, but absolutely the fuck not. That <laughs> Laura's not with it. She does not like that at all. No, I don't like that. That is a conspiracy theory. Oh, no. my God. Wow. The conspiracies. Zach's, got, Zach's conspiracy corner. We should <laughs> ZCC. <laughs> we should have one of those. You need a new one. I yeah. love it. I fucking love it. It's intense. I didn't even um, like, make that connection. But she, I think she did really well as a lead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Anna Kendrick, really. superstar. Yeah. We all think it here. Yeah. Uh, if this podcast, yeah. if you take one thing away from it, is give her all yes. the roles, uh, which yeah. every streaming so, service seems to be doing. Yeah. So the biggest thing with me where I was like watching it and I was already like, all right, these, these are grown adults singing, singing songs around a campfire. Cool. Sick. But the, the, the transition from outside singing to studio singing mm-hmm. was so jarring mm. where it just <laughs> turned into an ADR fest and it was just like, OK, yeah. well, now we're in a studio. We were first outside. And now we're singing inside in a studio and it sounds like Mm -hmm. it. You know, it sounds like we are all around a mic and it's hanging and we're singing like the Bee Gees or some shit. Right. So I I didn't care for that part. But whenever it was just like a straight up performance, Mm -hmm. like at the end, like at the end and in the pool and all of the and her singing in the shower i was like oh yeah this is oh, yeah this is dope i like this i like this these are good songs Titanium. um i like their takes on the songs yeah. um i have a fun fact so i read that anna kendrick anytime she was singing solo she sang live so that might also be the reason for like a jarring back and forth so she what well, you're saying is anna kendrick's got talent <laughs> Yeah. I'm saying that Anna Kendrick should not be Bella in Twilight, but she has talent. <laughs> yeah. Zach, okay. you never said your bigger overarching pleasure. Well, you've already touched on it. I love Ben Platt. I'm so happy to see him in a movie, but it's impossible for me to talk about the pleasure of Ben Platt without the guilt. They underutilized him. He's got the best. Yeah. That man I know. has the voice of a goddamn yes. angel. Dear Evan yeah. Hansen. Yes. And, and you give him one song and otherwise, look, I love Ben Platt. He looks 40 years old. Yeah. He looks so old. <laughs> uh, he looks simultaneously 14 and 45 at the same time. And it's wild. Yeah, Something so that's said about me I feel like. He's 27. I've also been ta- talking about this with my, my girlfriend where I was saying that, yo, every white dude in high school was was pulling like fucking crazy because they just had except for beards me. already except, yeah. except, except, for, except me. for that because because zach looks zach looks like a, a baby boy in it and it's like, ben Platt. And stuck right. in like ben Platt. but yeah but they were just do they were like they're going wild yeah. because they all had a full beard full facial hair all of this stuff they they had chiseled jaws mm-hmm. already and i'm over there looking like a like a, a puddle of pudding oh. like i looked gross <laughs> in high school <laughs> and it was it was annoying i would always look like there was this guy i was i was going up against for best smile for like the the, the yearbook or whatever best and smile. i saw who won <laughs> for best smile and i was like oh i got dimples dog i should win that's a that's a go-to and then i saw him and i was like this is a 24 year old what the f- what what chance do i have but then you know did you win i no, no. I, lost. I lost my long Ooh. shot what um, the fuck? is this the time where i tell yeah. you my senior superlative you was most likely to be famous Oh, hey. there it is. Wow. There you also, go. Also, I would, I would like to talk to wardrobe. Like, the yes. flight attendant Thank situation you. was so bad. Okay, oh, but, like, I was God. waiting for them. It's like, they went on such a journey to, like, okay, now we're diverse. We sound great together. We're, like, being more cool and trendy with the songs. And yeah. then, like, their final outfits were still garbage. Yeah. Like, it was, like, a black <laughs> yeah. and blue themed. They but were just looked like their shit. Yeah. Looked yeah. like shit. I was like, okay, if we're upgrading in every area, like, give us the fucking glitch. So, Lauren, I'm guessing that your love for this movie kind of begins and ends with the music, right? I think. Okay, but, like, I I also just, like, like, going back to how Fat Amy just, like, goes. Like, some of the lines that she... Okay, like, one of the most iconic lines that I have carried with me throughout life for the last nine years since this movie came out is when she's like, not a good enough reason to use the word penetration. You know what I mean? Like she just has some fucking yeah. one liners that are so yeah. good. You can tell that she was riffing yeah. the whole time because you're just, just like and riffing and like poking fun at the right. script a little bit. We're just like, ah, 
it, it, there's a better yeah. line here and then she finds it one more pleasure i was really excited to see some like heavy hitters as like big dude actors in this movie and yet it still be about the ladies and the friendships like it yeah. was back yeah. in 2012 yeah. right is when it came out where it wasn't mm-hmm. very like female driven movies yet we didn't i don't know if we had like bridesmaids back then i don't know that we had these like uh, uh probably not. lady ensemble yeah. film so i will say that was like I a big pleasure of mine was, was like was like oh, no. oh yeah it's it like i could identify with this and it was it definitely was a wish fulfillment yeah you got donald Faison dropping in for a bit role and then he's yep. out of there you got <laughs> he's, some... he's out he comes in he's like hey i was on scrubs and, then... and he leaves i love it <laughs> okay so i have a few surface level ones and then one's a little deeper okay um one love the mclovin cameo yes. <laughs> so yeah. random like he had one line in the movie and I, did this come out before or after um after uh this was way after, after super bad yeah yeah, yeah. super bad yeah and yeah. So i was like uh, mclovin we only hired you for one line i was like okay cool we're just moving yep. on and i loved the journey of the nodes <laughs> oh <laughs> the, journey, the nodes <laughs> the, the nodes when they just Her. it's so serious and it's like i have no yes. and it's just like yeah. such a it's so dramatic and then she gets the notes removed and then she can sing the crazy bass <laughs> notes was the funniest shit when she's like bah, and it uh, comes out so bass and low yes <laughs> yeah so love the journey yeah. of the notes and then going back to like your um like girl power movement um Loved that. And also loved that, like, the journey to be better was including diversity. Mm. Loved that, like, of all shapes and mm-hmm. sizes, all skin colors. Like, loved that that was the upgrade because it's very obvious and not all movies mm-hmm. see that as the mm-hmm. obvious. Yeah, it went from, like, a bunch yeah. of white bitches to, like, oh, wait, when you take the white out, they're not so bitchy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it went from a bunch of white bitches to only mostly white bitches. It was, like, on, uh, on both ends of that where I was just like, all right, so... It's still just mostly white people, white women. But at the same time, I don't know if you'd find any other race to join a glee club. <laughs> like just, <laughs> just like looking at the realism yeah. of it, it's just like I, I, I don't true, know, true. man. I'm, like, I'm gonna go realistic. try chess. That's real. Glee or some is ch- so yeah, it's fucking a guilty bit. of that too. Glee is like okay, but like we have white leads, but like nobody else is white, right? But like the ones getting mm-hmm. the biggest paychecks are. And, but we have so much diversity everywhere else. So like, we're right. okay, right? right? We're fine, right? Uh, you know what? In high school, I was the tab. I was the token Asian oh. bitch. The tab. <laughs> I haven't heard oh, wow. of, I haven't heard the I tab. I like that. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. What other, tab. there are a lot of fun abbreviations. When I moved to Toronto, I learned of the ABG and the ABP, which is Asian baby girl and Asian baby mm. princess. That's just. I grew up in a white, white yeah. city and uh, Toronto is so much my, more diverse. And so that became part of like, more prominent lingo. Yeah. <laughs> While we're talking about race, uh, this movie uh, dabbles in is it. Racist. Uh, yeah. It's racist. It's racist. <laughs> it's, it's, okay, so it, it's, it's adorably it's, racist. It's bi- adorably racist. Hilarious. It's adorably naive. Where you're <laughs> you're you're jumping in to certain like jokes and whatnot to be like, hey, I know we cast a bunch of white folks in this, but we're we're making note yeah. of it. <laughs> no. Just just do the right casting. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's so we easy. Can't. I also think that this movie is why Bridgerton oh, has so many just random sprinkles of Don't white people. You around blame because Bridgerton they feel on bad. This. They feel bad for how white this movie is. So they're just like, <laughs> well, if we just, just throw them in to a movie that they're not supposed to or show they're not supposed to be in, then I mean it wouldn't make sense if they're in. Blah blah blah. You know what I'm now anyway, just realizing? Is that the uh, the only other black girl in the Bellas gets kicked out immediately after the first night for having sex with a t- uh, a trouble <laughs> a trouble boner? I'm just now yeah. remembering that trouble. B- she got no 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 sorry she got trouble. Yeah, bone. see how easily the trouble white bones. mind just sees what it wants to see for <laughs> entertainment's <laughs> sake. <laughs> I think with the racism in this movie, you can go two ways, right? Because there is the uh, characters perhaps not being the race that they should be. uh, And there's a lot to discuss there. But then there's also just... Uh, racist jokes. I I marked seven Mm. minutes into the movie, Anna Kendrick comes into her dorm room. Literally, seven minutes! She has an Asian roommate. And the comedy of that scene, ha ha ha, is, do you speak English? 
No, you don't. Oh, you do. I'm sorry. I go to an English college. How does that <laughs> not like? What the fuck? <laughs> like, it's so. It's so. It's such an easy. This, yeah. This is a direct response to Barack Obama becoming president. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're just like, oh my god, thank God, we can just 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 throw as many white people in this. Just throw in as many as you can because it doesn't matter because they have a black president. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. <laughs> we have a black just president. We can laugh about race. We, we can, can laugh, laugh about, about it. We're, we're post race. <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious what other ones you guys caught. So we have there's the there's the bitchy Asian, uh, which is her roommate, and then there is the quiet mm-hmm. Asian. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, yep. Lauren, what what racism did yes, you catch? Yes, yes, please, Lauren. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, I would like to speak on my racist uh, experience. Um, Lily, <laughs> so the the Asian girl, like being a quiet Asian is like the stereotype of all mm-hmm. Asian stereotypes, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. and I will say that Lily has the biggest character development over all three movies and you need to watch them because she gets fucking crazy like Lily is fucking wild later on but like to make her be so quiet and like like yeah. she's like not saying words and it's so it's so uncomfortable yeah. it's so no, uncomfortable yeah. I watched the movie with subtitles and they did subvert the quiet Asian character a little bit I still think not enough but uh, the <laughs> lines that she or she's yeah. saying the entire movie she's saying dark yeah. shit she talks about yeah. absorbing <laughs> like eating a, her I, twin I in the womb my, my and lighting t- fires for joy and do you want to see yep. a dead body yeah yeah, yeah. Just make it not the Asian, you know? Just, yeah. just right. any, any, it, any, yeah, just any don't make it the character. Asian. <laughs> you can have a quiet Latina. You can have a quiet white girl. We don't exist. When have you ever seen a quiet white girl? That that character doesn't exist. <laughs> Wait, nice. one. Horse girls are kind of quiet. Horse, horse girls? girls? No, are you talking? Are you kidding me? Horse girls talk about their fucking horse. Um. Also, this isn't racist, but there was a the little bit of body shaming around the baloney nipples. Oh, thank like, you. T- <laughs> like, I remember in 2012 being like, oh, that's that's so funny. Like the baloney nipples. And now rewatching, I'm like, Oh my god! Like yeah. oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! You yeah. bitch! We're like, we're what? in the we're yeah. in the guilty, right? We're not in the pleasures anymore. Because yes, oh, we're in the guilty. Oh, okay. guilty. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we definitely have guilt. to like Racist piggyback guilt. off of that like body shaming thing with the fat Amy character because you you yeah. know it, those are back to back scenes yes. by the way. Yes. Oh yeah, it double whammy hits when you. When fat Amy, when they ask her like why why are you fat Amy and she's like so twig bitches don't call me that behind my back. I was like. If if you're if you're embracing it and that's what you want your character to be, then I was yes. like, because it's not it's not like in a mean sentiment that it's been placed mm-hmm. on her. She was like, right. I, I'm reflecting I of Amy. the world. Like that's what it like at the time. That was actually like a powerful thing. Like she's taking the power back into her. I just I'm only comfortable with that if it was Rebel Wilson's character choice, which yeah. I have to imagine it was because if they if writers were yeah. forcing her to say that, I would feel True. so uncomfortable. But I th- I have to assume it yeah, right. that's, that's a yucky rebel. Knowing that she improv most of it, it's yeah. yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. She probably started off the day <laughs> yeah. with that <laughs> and they were just like Oh, oh, so you're going in a different direction. Okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, just yeah. say what you want. It was written just as Amy. Like, her name is Amy, and she's like, no. oh, no, no, bitch. I'm fat Amy I'm for this entire Amy. movie. Rewrite that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but don't you think, like, if you're going to make the whole thing, like, I call myself fat Amy because I don't trust that people aren't going to call me that. By the end of the movie, they should be like, no, you're, just you're Amy. Amy. And, like, that's a shallow fucking arc, but, like, shouldn't, like, they yeah. not call not, her fat not Amy? Not 2012. Like, we're, it's 2021, <sighs> and we're just now getting people to wake up to the idea that the word fat should not evoke a feeling whether it be health or right. you know beauty or whatever right. it's like we we aren't there now we definitely fucking weren't there back then i think also like they portrayed her like she was the most confident bitch in that entire group True. and i think that's why like in 2012 it felt more okay because you were like yes bitch like, like oh do you like you think you're like like she she was like i am the most confident person here hands mm-hmm. down uh so fat amy pepperoni nipples and then immediately <laughs> after they introduce the deaf jews and she makes fun of oh. the deaf jews for not being able to speak it this movie is relentless it, up top yeah. and I know they're trying yeah. to set a tone, but man, oh man, oh man, oh man. What Some is that things- tone? It's very South Parkish what is that of tone? them. It was very, it was very South Parkish without like the hard right. jokes, you know, like really, really hard set up punchline. This is why this is funny, so on and so forth. With Pitch Perfect, it felt like it was like coming back a little mm. bit, where it's just like, oh no, these are just straight up 
cute jokes. Ha 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 ha. We're post all of this stuff. Nothing is really offensive. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, no, you're you're being pretty offensive. Mm-hmm. You just don't know it. Yeah. It immediately it's the type of movie that immediately makes you want to look up the cast and, and um crew behind the scenes, like who was writing it, who was producing writers, it. You're yeah. immediately like, Oh god, right. please don't be white. Oh god, please don't be white dudes. Oh god, please don't be white dudes. <laughs> yeah. like, it was written by a white oh, dude. Like the I don't know, but I can guarantee you this movie was directed by a man. I can guarantee it. Let's see. Jason Moore was yes, Tony Award for Best Direction of a Musical. Is he gay at least? Oh. <laughs> we can hope. <laughs> we can Jason pray. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Um, I, I highly doubt it based on the, we haven't talked about this yet, the relationship between the two judges, mm-hmm. Gail and yeah. John, like one, the weird sexual tension, but two, like the hardcore misogyny mm-hmm. that's happening there. Okay, so like there yeah. was one line that I pulled when I watched it today and he was like, uh, women are as mm-hmm. about it women are about as good as acapella as being they doctors. are being doctors. <laughs> and my oh, jaw fuck. was on the See, fucking but like, ground. To me, that in 2012 and like Elizabeth yeah. Banks sitting there, to me, that felt like an SNL sketch. I was like, oh, they're yes. calling it so, out. And that's why it was funny. Yeah. Everything about the judge in the commentary, I was like, oh, if this was the whole movie, with like the whole like, air of the movie where it's just like oh no we're being a fe- hard offensive on purpose right then you'd get it immediately mm-hmm. you'd be like okay so this is why but they kind of like peel they're back hammy. Mm-hmm. They're, they, ha- they're, they're, they're hammy yeah it, right it, you are right though it was the sprinkling of of just hardcore like over the top <laughs> yes. jokes that made it so jarring because it felt like the performers <laughs> right. in it didn't trust the script mm. they're like this yes. isn't funny enough so i need to say the craziest most offensive shit possible mm-hmm. and then you yeah. get elizabeth Banks saying that she used to be in a group called the minstrel Cycles. yeah that was <laughs> yeah. just like yeah. right right oh right, my right, god right. Yeah, oh it, every time it went back to her and John Smith, I was like, oh, these are the professionals. Oh, these are the real like comedians. And then it would go back to everybody else. Um, Adam Devine just doesn't fucking do it for me. Doesn't do at it. At all in this movie. <sighs> oh, at all. at all. Really? Oh, in the movie or just at no, all purpose? Love in, in, him. In general. Love him outside. Okay. In this movie, it was yeah. almost like he huh. was. He was bad. He thought he was the most famous person it felt like and that he was trying to do yeah. what Ebel, Rebel Wilson was accomplishing very well which was like this mm-hmm. very not professional um, traditional acting performance where he was doing the you could tell a lot of his shit was improv and he was like he was going the beyond to make that movement or that one line funnier than it needed to be and it, it just didn't work for me at all yeah mm. sorry Adam I don't know I don't mm. know. I could oh. have taken him out and still I, had a great movie. You Uh-oh. know what? I, I I agree. I don't think that he was like he was made for that role, but I think he did it well. In that, if they had chosen a picture perfect looking acapella, great quaff kind of dude, I feel like it's almost better that they chose like a regular bodied, regular face looking dude. Not not to put Adam Divine down to say that he's like a regular oh, looking no, you dude. Called him regular but he's face. kind of a regular looking dude. Yeah. He's yeah, kind he's of a regular, regular looking dude. Yeah. Like he's just like he's an average kind of guy. My complaint is with his performance, not so much him. As a person in that role, you hate Adam Divine. Got yeah, it. Yeah, no. you, I, wow, don't like wow. Did anyone did anyone clock the tightness of Adam Divine's cargo pants in the very first <laughs> scene when they're doing the um, the college? Were you on Bulge Alert? Oh, my, you couldn't not be on Bulge Alert with how fucking tight they were. <laughs> you know exactly which direction his dick is sitting. They are so I'm unbelievably Googling tight. <laughs> now, uh, Lauren, this is an audio podcast, so for we don't have visuals. So what side, just so we know. <laughs> you know so <laughs> so, so if you're if you're looking at him, it's going left. So it's going okay. right for him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I can't yeah. right. find it on the internet. <laughs> That's, That's cool. upsetting. I I will make sure to find it and send a group yeah. chat message with a photo afterwards. Oh. You found it? Um, not the one from Pitch Perfect, but holy shit. <laughs> he has shown you can't just Google dick, dick yeah, no, 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 mid many fucking times. podcast. It's gonna some stuff is gonna he pop is up, Kelly. You knew that he is on the site leaked meat. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's worse than Wiki Feet. That is hands down worse than Wiki Feet. I don't know. I did not mean to dri- drive us in this direction. It feels like reverse. No, sexist we're, we're for going some down. Reason. Yeah, we're, we're here. We're in we are the car. here. Now. Full frontal well, in movies. 
What? Wow. Oh, actually, yeah, he did that in the Workaholics movie, I think. Wow. Okay, Adam. How, well, Full how, meat. Oh, he's got well, a good, once again, Kelsey, good this is an audio podcast, so. Okay, sorry. How is it? What are what you are looking we, at? What are, we, what are we looking at? I what are we feel like with? I can't tell if he's. Is it soft or hard? Start um, there. Definitely. Is it a funny dick or is it like Jason Siegel being like, ha, my dick's funny, but actually I'm pretty hit proud he's of got, this and I want you all to see it. It looks like he's circumcised because it has that like dark ring around it. Huh. Okay. We did say this was the podcast right. where we talk about things that make you go, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Devine's got a, got, a, got a good tunnel alert. I get yeah. that. I look, oh, I man. The, <laughs> the drill bit is a bit thicker. The drill bit. He's got a yeah, good drill yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bell end. I fuck is with what that. They call it. What is it? Huh. You oh, what? fuck with that. Bell end. It's what the Brits bell refer to it as. Oh. Bell end. Oh, like well, the mushroom British at the end? Are all yeah. Uncircumcised. Bell end. They call, hmm. like, They'll be like, oh, you're being such a bell end, and it's a reference to. Who the, says that? I believe. Mm. The Brits. The Brits. Our friends the Br- from across, across the, the pond. pond. I do love huh. me some Brit Dick. <laughs> we said across the pond in Oi. unison. Didn't expect yeah, that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That was that was. Oi. I love that in Oi, Britain. Oh, it's British now. Oh, stop it, Rick. <laughs> that, that's Australia, British I think. British boy. Maybe. <laughs> I'm from. I'm from London, mate. Uh, from London, <laughs> mate. Us. I'm from London, that's, mate, or that's whatever the, the hell they That's the crocodile hunter guy. That's a crocodile? Sure. Oh, I was being... Oh, shit. I'm going to drop, I think, what is my biggest guilt of this movie. Okay. And it is that this movie wants to be a musical, but breaks every single rule of musicals. And yes. I will explain. This is this is my little dissertation about this. So in, <laughs> in musicals, musical numbers don't just start. They are because a character has reached a point of emotion where yes. words are no longer enough. And that's the same with action movies. Like action movies are like, our words aren't enough, so now we're gonna break out into this set piece. And so y- you can't get it into words, so I'm gonna sing and dance. But in this movie, music just fucking starts. And case in point <laughs> is, Party in the USA, they're just on a bus and they just start fucking singing. They're on a bus. There's no emotional purpose. There's no no one Buses no one grows fun. from it. No character goes Get from em. A to Z. No one changes. No one was brought to music because of something that was you happening. Don't just sing they in the just car. fucking sing. And I can't. Just I got I got it. shit to say. I got shit to Breathe. say. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh-oh. You don't just fucking sing in the car. Of course I do, but that's not a scene. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I Kel, Kelsey might end her friendship with me excuse right here. The next words out of my mouth. Me? Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Ew. I I don't love musicals. I don't oh, love musicals. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what? Now we're over here. Yeah. yeah and now yeah, here we yeah, go. Yeah, here we go. Oh, 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 I fuck with Lauren Heavy, dog. <laughs> Yo, fuck a musical Opinions so hard. Like I hate them. I hate them. Oh, oh, oh no, no, I think honey. <laughs> It, in the war between me and Kelsey, Garrick came out as Lauren's new best friend. Who knew? <laughs> Let's go, Garrick. It's Let's you and me, buddy. Go. It's you and me. Yeah, okay, so I, I, I don't like musicals. And I'm yeah. like, oh, you shut the what? fuck up. You're singing again. Like, singing just say what you again? need to say. We don't need a three right? minute fucking song. Into the Woods like, is fucking three hours long. Um, it's three hours long because of all the fucking we don't songs. Need that. Shit. We, we don't need that it. shit. Stop we don't singing. need it. We don't need it. So this is a movie. This is a movie with entertainment. Like when you go to a concert, you're like, fuck yeah, I'm here for like yeah. like some songs and some yeah. entertainment. And this is a movie about entertainment with music in it, but it's not it's about musical. being so fucking yeah. overcome that you need to scream your emotions at okay. someone at the okay, Disney Prince far, for 10 minutes but, and then make a fucking soundtrack okay, about listen. it. I okay. accept so, half of what you're saying. So I am, it's not a musical. I'm on it's both not sides trying to be. <laughs> Let's go, Gary. Let's go. It's not trying to be a musical. Okay, but if it's not trying, then Zach's dissertation needs to. Exactly. It's, no, it's a dumb argument. So just to be clear, you like <laughs> okay. movies with songs. You just don't want the yes. song to have any narrative function whatsoever. No, so. no, no, that's not true. There's narrative yeah. function because it's part of the storyline, but I just don't need to be like, ugh, I'm so heartbroken. And then you bust right. into a song about being heartbroken. Like, that's some fucking okay, bullshit. relax. It's corny. It is Take corny. It and it would have made this movie unbearably corny. <laughs> yeah, oh, my no, God. If it was just like a musical. Jesus Christ. But yeah, if it was... you um, watch so many musicals in this show. <laughs> please no please you have no this. idea. Please. Like, I've, I've slayed, like, the next... I have the next... <laughs> 
25 <laughs> weeks oh, oh, oh. and set out. Thank and you. it's like, I had to space out the musicals. When I had to be like, no. no, we can only do one musical. To be one. honest, the only musical I've loved is Brad, Brad Stillnesser's uh, The Fast and Furious musical, where I was just like, oh, this is just funny. This is just great. This is really good. Shout out to Brad. I'm in, a, I'm in a blind white lady rage right now about like how much the theater <laughs> has done for me and how much I've given back to it. It is a spiritual connection. And this was not a musical and it wasn't trying to be. I think in, in this movie, it should have just taken out the studio pieces where it's just like, oh, we're in a studio now. We're singing like this. And it sounds very ADR and it's jarring because that's what musicals do. Mm. If you're gonna do that, everybody needs to, in the background needs to be dancing and like there needs to be like a, a, a rainbow river throwing over your head or some some theatrics that just wasn't there. And so whenever it broke off in the song, I was just like, oh, these are just people singing. Cool. And they're in the you studio. You know what confused me? Mm. Uh, the, the Since You've Been Gone scene was treated like, it was the audition, mm-hmm. right? So so they're all auditioning for different acapella groups and they cut between everyone singing Since You've Been Gone. So they have fun. split screens. It's like fun, so fun, but it's treated like comedy but everyone's singing well. Not no all of them. Bad That's that. not bad. true. So, they all had decent no. voice. Am I crazy? Yes. They all were singing bad. No. That was mm-hmm. so parody though, because, okay, first of all, like when people, for the most part, go on like American Idol or whatever, usually they're like a C plus singer. These were all C plus singers oh, and then they talking- parodied it. Yeah. And we're like, okay, this guy sings like he's in the opera. This guy sings like he's in theater. This person well, is like doing too much. Yeah. You're talking about the auditions. Mm-hmm. The auditions, every, yeah. yeah, I get that part. Everybody was like bad. There were there were people that were bad, and there were people that, that was going to be the opera singer one was of my, the most. Yeah, he was sure. amazing. Are you kidding? That was going to be one of my guilts. Was like, yeah. I'm going to get shit for saying this, but like, I don't think Anna Kendrick. Don't you dare. Rebel don't Wilson. Dare. Don't, don't fucking. Or don't the you blonde don't chick. Talk about Anna. What's don't coming? You are good what's coming? singers are you really? Oh at my god. Oh. Are you? This is an Anna Kendrick Stan podcast. What the I, and fuck? I, we should rename this podcast Anna I Kendrick Stan. I stand by my stand by Anna Kendrick. I fully stand by this stand She has the voice of an angel. Yeah, she can I will sing. say that Anna Kendrick doesn't have like the power Thank behind you. her voice. There is a specific yeah. type of there, voice in yeah. acapella. She's she's good. She's yeah. good, but she doesn't have like the power where you're like, oh, that's fucking belting. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Zach is distraught. Zach's you distraught guys can again. be as distraught as you want, but as a professional musical theater minor who never did anything with her life <laughs> in music can tell you like those three people that I named I think Brittany Snow she's classically trained so I think she actually does have the voice of an angel those three girls that I mentioned I don't think were right for acapella vocalists in this movie and that's I'm just saying it in indie get Anna Kendrick in an indie in a river or something like singing that way oh my my pussy is wet on the floor but it was just not right for a pop banger like this I cannot believe you right now, Anna Kendrick. Her voice carried this movie, and you know what? It's it my great. favorite movie. Anna Kendrick is great. Pitch Perfect is perfect. Oh wow! Okay, uh, yeah. also, changing. Anna you. Kendrick <laughs> sings. She also sings in my other favorite movie, Trolls, which Lauren and I almost talked about today. Instead, Woo! Uh, yo, bring me back on for Trolls. Let's go. Bring me and Maggie need to be. We need to be on Trolls together. Well, guys, there's so much that we could talk about with this movie. Uh, apparently, I'm its biggest defender now. Yay. You know what? Okay, I'm gonna. You, you're gonna tell Yay. me that the Cup song is not a certified banger. You don't love the Cup song just because of the song. It's because of Anna Kendrick's flawless. Like I said. Rendition. Titanium in the shower in that very like indie moment where her natural yeah. vibrato v- yeah. hits off the tile. I'm here for it. An acapella lead? No. There, there is also a moment where uh, in the shower, which was a horrifying scene that we didn't talk about, where she's like accosted naked in the it's shower. It's a lady thing. Uh, she, she opens and she goes, you know David Guetta? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's a top 40. Wait, and also yeah. then the naked dude that walks was, in yeah. and we're like, yeah. what? That uh, was Maybe because my college was not no. like that, but I'm like, do y'all no. have co-ed showers? I was like no, so confused. she snuck him in. Yeah, no, that was fucked up. It was up. late. Yeah. Well, now we're at the point every week I like to bring a couple little fun facts for us. Uh, so I'm going to keep this one quick. First of all, in real life, Skylar Aston, who played Jesse, mm-hmm. got married to Anna Camp, yeah. who we didn't talk about Update, at all in this podcast, I did. who played Aubrey. They're uh, divorced. And then They're they divorced lost. now. They yeah, got divorced? They, yeah. Well, yeah. They got 2019. Divorced. What happened? They weren't Aka perfect anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look it up. I want to know why. Because they got Aka separated, and now they, they got are Aka separated. Aka and they were Aka sad. Aka. Yeah, they were only married for uh, two years. 
Yeah, they yeah. weren't perfect, babe. We just yeah. said that. <laughs> okay, that. <laughs> uh, this one I thought was bold in the riff off scene in the swimming pool. So there's this big wheel that spins yes. about the category, and uh, one of the categories is songs ruined by Glee, <laughs> which I think is a bold Whoa. shot fired from Whoa. this movie. I'll that say is, no more. That is big I disrespectful because this movie that. is a is a direct. Like fucking, I'm trying, not a direct, it is them trying their hardest not to be Glee and then yeah. making fun of Glee, but then being worse than Glee. Like it was, it was a weird thing for me. It was just like, oh, we're going to have it in college, not in high school. We're going to, you know, have a whole group. Say, it, it was, it was a, it was a lot. Or we're going to be a comedy rather than like just a straight up drama. We are uh, unfortunately out of time. Uh, but before we go, we're going to decide the final word is this movie a pleasure, a guilty pleasure, or just a guilt. Mm. Uh, this is your chance, Lauren, we did not prep you. This is your chance to defend the movie and recommend it in all its glory. Why, why should people watch this? People should watch this because it's not a musical. If you hate musicals, this is the movie for you. But it's got great singing, great entertainment value, mediocre dancing, and when you're aware and not in agreement with the racism and are acknowledging that it's not okay, the rest of the movie is good. Yes. You watch this movie to learn. Yes. You know, to learn just, about it's a, racism. It's a teachable there moment. You go. <laughs> it's You have to remember the time in which it was made, right? Go in with that knowledge. Right. Not making sure, not, not saying that in 2012 it was okay, but we just didn't care about what people thought back then. <laughs> do, do you think it's a pleasure, a guilt, or a guilty pleasure? <sighs> See, it's so hard because, like, it's it. There's there's handfuls of racism. I don't know where to put myself there without getting canceled myself. Fuck. It's a, but that's why you say you're, you're good. Guilty pleasure. Guilty what, pleasure. what are my options again? What's my options again? It's pleasure, guilt, or guilty yes. pleasure. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. go guilty pleasure. It makes I got I got yays and nays. Yeah, I got yays I'm and nays. I'm with you on that. Like as much as I stand this movie and still stand Anna Kendrick, do not get me wrong. I would I, literally like yeah. date her in a heartbeat, fully in love when with her. When she comes on the show, you're not invited. Um, first you of all, oh, you cannot come. You can't have a podcast We're gonna... without me in it called guilty pleasure. <laughs> um, I will tell Anna that straight to her face. I'm sure she, you know, I read Scrappy Little Nobody. I know where she lives. I Wait, won't say what? Anything. Kelsey's not here. Yeah, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna back Great Lauren up impression. on that. It, I don't feel good about it, but I'm not afraid to fully right. fucking confidently admit that this is one thousand percent a guilty pleasure. Yeah, this is a this is a guilty pleasure uh, for all the reasons stated. But Anna Kendrick is a goddamn national treasure, and so you should watch yep. everything mm. that she makes. Also, <laughs> they they like. You know, they did this whole thing where, like, at the end, they all come together and learn. But they were actually uh, still kind of generic. They they were kind of just like all the other acapella groups at the end. They were not different in any way. They weren't. They also, weren't that also much the growth, they, the growth, Zach. I don't know that there was much. Also, I, we didn't talk about. Uh, this is kind of a movie about a white girl teaching the world about hip hop, and uh, I kind of thought that was weird. <laughs> oh <laughs> so, yes, the La La Land effect. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I think it was a 100% a guilty pl pleasure because although I had like, and we all had our gripes about it, it's, it's, I can still see why people yeah. like it, even though I don't get the appeal behind Glee in general. Like I wanted it to be like hard, like, like fucking making fun of musicals. Like just, it's this is bad and corny and I, and I don't like it and blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> it didn't do that. But people... People do. I mean, I know, I know, but people liked it a lot. So I, I don't know. I am I'm in the middle with it. Yeah. Kelsey, you <laughs> and I are. People. And I feel like because you admitted it's Laura a guilty pleasure, Kelsey Rick. I feel like. Our beef is over. I feel like our fight is done. <laughs> I can't oh, that's so nice. forever. Look at that smile. You win best, best oh, smile yeah, in my you. book, oh, baby. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I still lost. I still I lost. It's not going to take away the pain. Seriously, you got it. You wow, Skylar Aston is right. Endings are the best. Oh, shut the fuck up, Zach. Were you How waiting nice. for that yeah, the whole I don't time? Know that. No. You motherfucker. That's hammy. That's hammy. <laughs> oh, so it's fine when he does it whatever guys thanks for watching this has been guilty pleasures join us next week when we talk about I, I don't know we haven't planned it yet uh lauren thank you so much for joining us where can the people find you at lord diy and at wild till nine podcast garrick ah uh, garrick bernard on instagram and garrick was taken on twitter
And I'm at Kelsey Dare on all the things. Don't forget to check out justiceforsoraya.com. Zach, where can people find you? I'm at Corn Diddy, but please, the, what would mean the most is uh, leave a five star review. It helps people find the show. Tell your friends about it. Uh, you know, we're we're here. We're doing fun stuff. We're having a good time. Until next time. Until next time. Waraka <laughs> <laughs> <Rocker>, out. <laughs> <laughs>